So we're now going to look at f of x equals x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. Okay? So this one's a little bit more complicated to deal with. And I don't particularly want to have to draw this out every single time I draw one of these. So, and also, if I try and superimpose one on top of the other, it's going to look very confusing. So I'm just going to draw this one to the side so that I know what it looks like. So x plus 2, so we're going through minus 2, 1, and 3. So minus 2, uh, and we've got um, it going through 6 on the y-axis. So 2 times minus 1 times minus 3 is 6. So it should look something like this. Okay, so there's 6, there's the minus 2, there's the 1, there's the 3. Now, in order to get a good idea of where those turning points are, I've had a look at uh, Desmos just to check it out. So this point here is 2.12 minus 4.061. And this point up here is... Uh, minus 0 0.786 um, and 8.209. Okay, for reference sake of how high and how low this curve is getting. So, um, if you had to actually calculate where those turning points were, you would have to know uh, differentiation. Okay, so you would have to expand these brackets out, you would have to differentiate, you would get a quadratic, you would put that equal to zero, you would solve that quadratic and that would give you the two x coordinates of these points and then you could substitute those back into the y in order to get the y coordinates, okay? I'm not interested in that at this very juncture, okay? I'm actually just interested in sketching what this curve is going to look like after these transformations and really looking at the points where the curve is crossing the x and y axis, the coordinate axes. So, f of x minus 3. Let's have, <coughs> let's have a look at that one. So, that would be a translation by the vector 3, 0. So it's going to move all the points 3 to the right. So minus 2 will now be at 1. So this curve will look something like this, because now it will be going through 1. This point will now be going through 4, and that will be 3 plus 3, so 6. So I don't know where it's crossing the y-axis, however. But I could work it out by replacing each of the x's with x minus 3 in the equation. So x minus 3 plus 2, x minus 3 minus 1, x minus 3 minus 3. And if I rewrite that, I'll have x uh, minus 1, x minus 4, and x minus 6. So if I expanded those brackets, I would get a constant term of minus 1 times minus 4 times minus 6 which is minus 24. So this point would be actually minus 24, so I can work that one out, okay? So that is what the translated curve would look like. Okay, so let's erase that one. Now if I'm looking at f of x plus two, you'll start to see as to why um, I put the turning points in, because I need to know whether the turning points are going above or below the x-axis with a translation. So, this new curve will look something like, so it'll be higher, okay, it won't be so um, below the x-axis anymore, that point would be 2.12 minus 2.061. And this point here will be minus 0 0.786, 8, oh sorry, 10.209. Okay, so I'll know the uh, minimum and maximum points there. 
However, I don't know where it's crossing the x-axis, and I don't know where it's crossing the y-axis. What I could do is to find the equation is just have that f of x, and then add 2 to it. Now, this is no longer in factorised form. So, if I wanted to work out where it crosses the x-axis, I would have to expand that out and then solve the cubic that I get. And in all likelihood, they're not going to be very nice numbers. Uh, so I'd have to use um, a cubic calculator. I can do it on the uh, Casio 991EX, uh, uh, the class whiz. You could do it on a calculator like that, or other, ca other um, graphical calculators, perhaps. Um, but certainly not by hand. Okay, you wouldn't want to do that by hand. We could work out where it's crossing the y-axis um, because, well, 2 times minus 1 times minus 3 is still 6. Add 2, it'll be 8. Okay, so it'll still be crossing there at 8. But that's really as far as we can go with it. Okay? So, in all likelihood, if this was an examinable question uh, and you were asked to translate that, it will most likely be... Um, parallel to the x-axis and not the y-axis because there are, it leaves too many unanswered questions. Okay, so how about y equals f of 2x? Well, that's a stretch parallel to the x-axis factor a half. So what we're going to get is a curve that is narrower OK, um, it will be going through minus 1 because that x coordinate will have halved. This y coordinate, 6, will not have changed. This one will be a half and this one will be 3 halves. Um, the stationary point here, the turning point, will be half of the 2.12, so 1.06 minus 4.061 and this point will be half of that which is uh, 353 90 so minus 0 0.393 8.209 okay and that's what my new curve would look like Equation wise, we've replaced the x with 2x, so we would do the same in the equation. So we'd have 2x plus 2, 2x minus 1, 2x minus 3. Okay, now you could pull the 2 out of that bracket if you wanted to, but uh, that's it in factorised form. Not fully factorised because you could write that as 2 lots of x plus 1, 2x minus 1, 2x minus 3. OK? But that's what the curve would look like. Now, 1 half f of x stretches the curve by a factor of a half uh, parallel to the y-axis. Just going to squash it down. So you would now get something that would look like maybe something like that. This point would now be 3, but the x coordinates will stay the same. This one will be 2.12, but now half of the y coordinates are minus 2.0305. And this one will be minus 0 0.786 still, but 4.1045. OK, and that would be my transformed curve. Ah, let's just pop the half in front of those brackets, and that gives you the equation of the new curve. Now you've got f of minus x, so that's a reflection in the y-axis. OK. Now these can always be a little bit awkward to draw because you're kind of doing it around the other way. So something like something like that. 
um, where we have uh, mind. We have two, minus one, and minus three. Um, that would still be six. This point would be 0 0.7868.209, .8 and that one will be uh, minus 2.12 minus 4.061. Okay, and that's the curve reflected in the uh, y-axis. So if we replace each of the x's with minus x, I get minus x plus 2, minus x minus 1, and minus x minus 3. Now, um, it's not particularly nice looking like that. What you can do is you can pull the minus 1 out of both of those brackets, a factor minus 1 out of both of those. Obviously, when you've got minus 1 and minus 1 multiplied together, that will make 1. So this is the same as saying minus x plus 2, x plus 1, x plus 3. Okay, by factoring both the minus ones out. Now you could rewrite that as two minus x. That's probably how I would write it. Okay, and it highlights the fact that you're going to get a minus x cubed, and hence this shape, as opposed to that one. Okay. Right. So, last but not least, we have minus f of x. So a reflection in the x-axis this time. Okay, so this is all getting flipped up, so it will look something like, oh, that went a bit, a bit bad, didn't it? There we are, something like that. Okay, so we've got 1, 3, minus 2, minus 6. This point is going to be minus 0.786. Uh, minus 8.209, and this point will be 2.12, 4.061. Okay, so every point has been reflected in the x axis, and so that's the same as just putting a minus sign outside all three of those brackets outside of the f of x, like so. Okay, and that's how we can transform this f of x.